So over the last seven years, I have been surrounded by some of the world's smartest and highest performing people at the University of Cambridge, both like my fellow students and also the lecturers I was with on a daily basis. And then since leaving there, going to law school and starting work at one of the world's best law firms, basically I have learned a huge amount from all of these hugely talented, hugely successful people. And so I wanted to share in this video my top eight lessons that I've learned that I think have made me a radically kind of better, more open-minded person than the one I was when I left school. Lesson number one is that we don't ask anywhere near enough questions. I can say unequivocally that throughout my time at Cambridge, every single year in every single set of exams, the people that did the best were the ones who asked most questions throughout all of our seminars and kind of of each other. And I know that in my first year, I didn't do as well as in any of the other years. And that was because First of all, I didn't fundamentally think that I should ask questions because I kind of felt like everyone would be judging me and thinking, who's that guy asking like the stupid questions? I've got to say, even now I'm in like this law firm environment, the best lawyers, the people who I'm like look at and I'm like, wow, you are just so flipping good. Are the people who are willing to put themselves out there and ask these silly questions of their clients because they fully understand the problem, they get to the heart of what the issue is and focus on one principle, which is that if it is something that you can find out for yourself in like one or two minutes, that is not a question you should be asking, just Google it. But if it is a question that goes to your understanding that like fundamentally you can't just like Google and find out online the answer to, then flipping ask it because it honestly will make such a huge difference to your performance in whatever task you're doing. There's like another fundamental benefit to asking questions which is that you show you're engaged with whoever's speaking to you. We were on a partner call and he like said to us, okay, so what do all of you guys think will make like the next six months in this department really successful for you? And no one was willing to answer and two of us did. And you know, we will be remembered for that. And I think the question is, would you rather be remembered or be completely forgettable because you're amongst all of the other people who aren't willing to put themselves out there, face kind of the potential of embarrassment, but also the huge upside of making positive impressions. And as a final point, people love talking about themselves. It is fantastic for building relationships. My good friend Jay from Texas is phenomenal at this. He will ask so many questions of everyone he ever meets and they just really warm to him because he shows genuine interest and you know, people love talking about themselves and he gets to learn like loads about them and experience the world kind of that much more fully. All right, so the next lesson is that things that are good for you don't have to be painful. And this really comes because I was a kid at school who like, you know, I did quite a lot of sport and whenever there was a fitness drill or whenever there was like a running race, I would use every single excuse I had to not do it because I hated the pain and I just really hated like that feeling of being out of my comfort zone in a physical sense. I guess certainly with exercise, like my biggest lesson has been that to do exercise for me regularly and I do do exercise very regularly now, the key is really just to make it, it as enjoyable as it can be. And so, you know, I now listen to an audiobook or a podcast on my run because I frankly read quite slowly. I can consume that content in just the same time, if not probably less time than I would reading myself but I also get the benefit of doing exercise or just going on a walk and listening to something while I'm out on my walk. The same really applies, I think, to everything, not just like physical pain, but also the pain we build up, the imagined pain of like studying or working. I know I've been really vocal recently about making sure you're finding balance and, you know, managing your mental health, which is absolutely essential. But at the same time, like you can also enjoy the work you're doing. I really enjoy making these videos. I love sitting down all morning this morning and kind of coming up with the ideas for this. So, you know, I think it's just this idea that things that are good for you, you know, don't have to be built up in your head as these really painful, like arduous things. My third lesson is that people suck at investing. So I don't just mean like on the stock market, I mean investing like any time or money in something today that is gonna give like long-term benefit. People fundamentally like are driven by desires, what's right in front of them now, what they really want in that moment. And we're very bad at kind of waiting for long-term returns. And that means means that, you know, 
we can see it on a macro level in society as like this sort of blown up version of human nature. We cure things rather than preventing things, invest way more money in policing and in, you know, prison than in education. And to be clear, that's not to say that money shouldn't be spent on policing or healthcare, just that more money should be invested up front in kind of preventing those issues arising in the first place. Although I may wake up with 10 unanswered emails on a morning and have loads of questions that I need to get back to people on, actually, if I sit down at 8am without having done any exercise, any like personal development, any reading, any talking to Beth, all these things that really do make a difference to how I feel, then actually I'm going to be way less productive throughout the day. It is so tempting to get straight on with work, but actually if I make that investment right at the start of the day to do exercise, which will make me productive throughout the rest of the day. For example, to read a bit of a book or do a bit of a course on Skillshare, today's sponsor. Very, very excitingly, in addition to everything you're about to hear that I love about them, I also now have my very own Skillshare course on Skillshare, all about the productivity kind of system I've built in a tool called Trello. It's effectively where I house like all all of my to-do lists and plan everything I have going on in my life from exercise through to my business on YouTube through to my work as a corporate lawyer. Skillshare taught me how to edit my videos when I was first starting out on YouTube with their amazing classes on Final Cut Pro as well as their online learning community to help answer my questions. One of the best courses I've taken recently was Thomas Frank's course Productivity for Creatives. It's massively helped me up the quality of my videos I think and be more consistent where I previously had struggled to post regularly. So yeah, as part of investing in myself, I often dedicate time to learning new things on Skillshare, whether that be editing sweet Instapics or living more sustainably. Skillshare has enabled me to connect with fellow creatives and motivated me to never stop learning. I personally have been subscribed to Skillshare, as I say, for a year and a half now, so I'm really excited to have them as a sponsor. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership and after that, it's really affordable at just $10 a month. You need to invest in looking after yourself kind of physically, mentally, and developing yourself so that you get better by, you know, learning from other people rather than just churning on with the work and being relatively unproductive when doing so. My next lesson has definitely come from the last eight months working in an insanely like successful corporate law firm. And it is that other people think about you way less than you think they do. Clifford Chance is an absolutely amazing firm. I love it. I think, you know, there is so much good there and they have so much support available. But at the same time, you're part of a huge organization full of adults and you're treated like adults. And, you know, these people all have crazily busy schedules. They have tons to do and tons to think about. And you just naturally are not like top of that list. The point here is really that, you know, when I'm at work, for example, and I send a message to my supervisor or another lawyer and they don't get back to me straight away and I'm thinking, oh man, they don't want to work with me anymore. Like I've, I've done something wrong or, you know, I've not been crazily busy for one week and it means no one in the firm actually wants to work with me. Like I must have done a terrible job. That just isn't true. The reality is that person probably hasn't seen it or is busy doing something else. And from this, I think I'd also say that I've learned that it's actually way more acceptable to pester people, be polite, but you know, be bold in trying to reach out to people, make connections, because those are kind of the relationships and the things that are gonna really make a difference in your career, I think. Okay, so lesson number five, and this one is a huge one for me, and this is maybe the lesson I'm currently struggling with still most. It is that collaboration generally always beats competition. And I think throughout like school and university, we're constantly compared in our marks and our grades to other people. And I would absolutely say that like to an extent, university is a competition. There are other people who, you know, are writing similar essays to you and it matters whether you have your own original idea. So I would stick with the idea that like, I wouldn't recommend kind of completely collaborating, telling everyone all of the, you know, unique or slightly original or, you know, independent research that you've done. But I do think there is huge value in collaboration, in sharing ideas, in testing ideas with other people. We can all coexist and all provide value and all be successful. And by like cross contaminating with one another, we can all kind of learn and grow at the same time. It doesn't have to be a competition. So if I had one like practical tip I would give to you, which I am currently implementing myself, it's that. 
People respond very well to acts of kindness. If you can do someone a favor, they're gonna feel a sense of wanting to reciprocate that. And so one easy thing you can do is share people's content on LinkedIn. If you see a good post, share that with all of your, you know, your connections. Or on Instagram, if you see someone's story that you think, oh wow, that's really great. Even if it's just, you know, a friend, share it and you will kind of gain some kind of goodwill capital with that person that then they will feel like they should reciprocate in future. Plus you'll also kind of be feeling good about the fact you've done that and be sharing like genuinely valuable content on LinkedIn or with your followers, wherever they may be. Okay, next up is that exposure is everything. And this lesson really comes from the fact that I studied French, Spanish, Latin American cultures and ways of living. But I was incredibly lucky to get to travel and live in France, Spain, and Peru. I've also traveled kind of relatively extensively and I understand like not everyone is necessarily in the position to be able to do that. But we all have access to the internet. We all have access to information and in an age where algorithms want to show us what we've already watched want to show us more of the same content of the same ideas i think it's really on us to reach out of our comfort zones and gain exposure to different ways of living different ways of thinking different ways of seeing the world whenever you see an opportunity to for example, you know, do some work with another country or do something with people who are totally different to yourself. Take it. My next lesson is that we need to take responsibility. I think it's so tempting generally to blame things on others or external circumstances because things often do happen that are outside of our control and I am 100% guilty of this. But as much as possible, I'm trying to adopt this kind of stoic idea that you need to focus on what is within your control. At work the other day, someone did a terrible job of something and you know, like the piece of work that the associate got back, they were really disappointed with. And the associate, instead of having a go at the person who'd done that piece of work, blamed themselves, they took it on board. Rather than just blaming that other person, they understood that actually they maybe hadn't chosen the right person to do this, or maybe they hadn't given clear enough instructions, or maybe they needed to put in place better processes to make sure this couldn't have happened. You know, there are always things that we can do to change the outcome which someone else is kind of giving to us. And I think looking at things from that perspective is really, really important. Crucially, it's like really empowering to know, you know, this is not out of my control. It's not something I have no control over because someone else is doing it. It's something that I have the power to change and improve. And my final and I think probably most important lesson of all has been that people matter, not things. And, you know, I grew up in a slightly unusual environment. I went to a private school, but my parents went hugely well off. And, you know, we were very well off in relative terms. I had everything I could ever have wanted, really. But, you know, lots of my friends' parents around me were way more wealthy. And I think I kind of grew up, therefore, somewhat idealizing like money and material possessions in big houses. And I think the more I've kind of gone into a world where things are abundant, the more I've realized that those things don't make you happy, don't really matter. And so I guess the point, like the actionable thing I'm doing off the back of this that I really try to keep in mind is whenever I'm with people, whenever I'm going out with friends, like in an hour, hopefully I will not be late for the train. We better get a move on. Um, and you know, I'm gonna really relish that experience. I'm not gonna be on my phone very much, like taking Instagram all the time. I'm not gonna kind of worry too much about money because I'm in the fortunate position to be able to spend a bit of money, not think about like the things that could buy me, but just enjoy the experience of being with my friends, of being surrounded by people I really get on with and I'm lucky to get to spend time with and appreciating things for what they are. I think generally just being grateful much more grateful than I probably was as an 18 year old, but hey, I think that's probably just getting old thing. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you have, then please do go and check out my other video where I shared my top kind of habits for getting through really busy periods at work. And do please like and subscribe, particularly like, like it makes a huge difference to how this video does. So if you've made it this far, please do give it a like. Please do comment. I always reply to comments um, as much as I can, which is quite a lot like I reply to most comments. So yeah, and I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Thanks so much for watching.